In lesson nine, we will begin be beginning our first lesson with fractions. As you're aware, we use fractions in lots of places in our everyday world. For example, we might buy four and a half yards of material to make something. Or we might use two and a fourth cups of flour to make a recipe of cookies. Those are just two examples of where we use fractions. What we're going to be doing today on Take 9 is we're going to be talking about what a fraction means. We're going to be drawing pictures of fractions, representing fractions pictorially. We're going to be talking about what we mean by equivalent fractions, and we'll be finding ways to find equivalent fractions. A fraction represents parts of a whole. You see a fraction written here. The number on top is called the numerator. The number on the bottom is called the denominator. And we have a bar that separates the numerator from the denominator. Sometimes we see fractions written A slash B. So this is another way a fraction might be written. The denominator of the fraction, in this case the B, represents the number of parts into which the whole that you're talking about is divided. So the denominator tells you the number of parts into which your whole is divided. The numerator, or the top number of the fraction, tells the number of those parts that are being used. Let's look at an example of a fraction, 3 fourths. In the fraction 3 fourths, the whole is divided into four parts. So I'm going to use the circle here to represent my whole. I'm going to take my circle and divide it into four parts. Okay, those are supposed to be four equal parts. It looks like I'm off a little bit. But let's imagine those are four equal parts. So I've split my whole into four parts. And if I'm interested in three-fourths of the circle, the three, the numerator, tells me how many of those four parts I'm interested in. So let's shade in three of the parts. Okay, and that would be three fourths. of my circle. Let's look at another fraction, 3 eighths. This time it tells us that our circle is to be divided into eight parts. So let's divide our circle first of all in half. And then let's divide our half. And then we'll divide those in half again. So now I have my whole, or my circle, divided into eight parts. And if I was interested in three of those parts, I could shade in three of the eight parts. And that would represent three eighths of my circle. And that would be a picture of the fraction three-eighths. Let's look at another fraction, two-thirds. This time I'm going to let a box or a rectangle stand for my whole and I'm going to take my rectangle and split it up into three pieces. So my denominator of my three told me to split it up into three pieces, and if I wanted two of those three pieces, then I would 
Shadian Tua. And that would represent two thirds. Suppose I wanted to draw six sixes. Now I could go back and use that same rectangle I had up there and divide each of those into to halves, but I'll go ahead and use this new one down here. And I've already split it up into six little pieces. What you might do is, if you were having trouble getting it to split up into the right number of pieces, is you could just draw your pieces first. Draw out six pieces all the same size and then put an end on it. One, two, three, Let's see, four, five, six. And they're all supposed to be the same size. Now, so my denominator tells me that I want to have six divisions in my hole, which I do. And my numerator tells me I want to shade in six of those. So if I shade in six of them, Depends on what I'm covering. One, two, three, four, five, six. By the time I've shaded in six of them, I've used up the whole rectangle. And that's sensible because six sixes, if we divide six into six, we get one whole. Six sixes is equal to one. So we can say if the numerator of a fraction is equal to the denominator of a fraction, we have a whole number. So if you have a over a, that's going to always be equal to 1, as long as a is not 0. You can't divide by 0, so you couldn't have 0 over 0. But any other number over itself will always represent a whole, because your whole thing will be shaded in. Now let's represent the fraction 10 fourths. Well, the 4 again is a denominator, so it tells us how many divisions a whole is supposed to be split into. So I've already split this circle into four pieces, and I eventually want 10 pieces. So if I shade in this whole circle, I've used up four pieces. So now I need to take another circle. And I've already got the second circle split up into fours. So if I shade it in, that will give me eight pieces, but I want ten pieces. So I've got to go to another circle that's been split into fours. And since I want ten pieces, I'll need to shade in two more of these pieces. So that will be a picture of 10 fours. Each hole can only be split into four pieces because my denominator is four. So if I was going to only split holes into four pieces, it took two holes, each shaded all the way in, and then a third hole in which I had two pieces shaded in. So we could say this is 10 fours, or it's one, two holes, and two fours. So we can say we have 10 fours, which is the same as 2 and 2 fourths, or we might say, if we wanted to, that that was the same as 2 and 1 half. So 2 fourths is the same as a half. You can see that half of the circle is shaded in. Now, in this case, the numerator was bigger than the denominator. 10 is bigger than the four. Anytime the numerator is bigger than the denominator, we, our fraction is what we call an improper fraction. And you're going to always end up, when you have an improper fraction, with having more than one, needing more than one hole to draw a picture of it. Okay, so in general, we can say if we have A over B and A is bigger than B, we have an improper fraction. Another an example of an improper fraction is 15 thirteenths. 